thinners are, are very, very fundamental and very, very kind of un, not physically intuitive things, but, but, and, and with a really beautiful mathematical structure. But so one thing to say about spinners is that they're really fundamental to our physical theory in the sense that what, what people found, you know, way back when, when they were studying quantum mechanics was that, you know, they were figuring out quantum mechanics by looking at atomic spectra. And they basically found out that every, um, every kind of energy state of, of an atom, which seemed to, seemed to involve these electrons moving around in, in the field, in the field of a nucleus, that all of these energy states actually were, were doubled. That if you look closely, you saw that there were actually two, two energy states where there should be one. And you could, and you could see one thing that you could wait to see this was by putting the atom in a magnetic field and then the, then the energy levels would split a little bit. Okay. So, but, so, but there was this kind of this twofold doubling of everything of the so quantum mechanics was confusing enough, but all, all of this, <laughs> if you ask what's the state of an electron, you had to, all this confusing thing about its moment, where its position, its momentum, Heisenberg's mm-hmm. attorneys there. Yeah. But you had this other weird thing that it, it, it had, it, it, it had kind of two, two states, not just one. Yeah. And so, and, and then, Anyway, so 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 there there was an, an understanding that you had to think about this new this new kind of degree of freedom, and it was, and it was called a, a spinner degree of freedom, because it um it actually behaves. You know, it does something very non trivial when when you rotate a system. If if you take a system and, and rotate it around, this this thing these these two states kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of move around. These these two states move around in between each other. So there's there was something about this twofold extra degree of freedom, which was also involved with the, with the geometry with geometry and with how how the system behaved under rotations. Mm-hmm. So so this is I mean, as always to me has been one of the kind of great great mysteries and, and and one of the fundamental clues about about physics that you know are all of the matter particles we know about have this property. And so if you want to think about a fundamental theory and you want to think about it in terms of geometry, you really should be thinking in terms of the geometry of these spinners. So that's the physical motivation. Um, mathematically, then if you start looking at the mathematics of it, we're kind of used to thinking about geometry in terms of vectors. Yeah. And, and so you have, but um, <clears throat> what you find when, when you, if you think about vectors in three and especially in four dimensions, if you try and put space and time together, mm-hmm. so you have kind of, four-dimensional space-time vectors that they, you can think of the relation between vectors and spinners in a sense that the, that spinners are square roots of vectors that you can, you can, multi, the spinners are objects that you can, you can multi, you, you, you can put two of them together and in, in a sense to create a vector. Okay. And, and the, the mathematics of this one way of stating the mathematics isn't so difficult. It's um everything is, a bit um, not so physically intuitive because you, you to do this you really need to work with complex numbers. Mm-hmm. But one thing you can do with um, to study ve- to study vectors in four dimensions is to you know allow them to be complex, to have complex coefficients, and then think of them as as not as a list of four numbers like you normally do, but think of them as a matrix of two, a two by two matrix, okay. two rows and two columns. And yeah. So it has four entries. And, and then you can think of the breakup into, into the spinners is, is the breakup into the rows and columns. That yeah. a, a matrix in some sense is a product of the rows and its columns. And that's, that's, a, that's very precisely the relationship between in four dimensional geometry between complex vectors and spinners. The spinners are exactly the vectors are exactly two by two complex matrices. The spinners are exactly the kind of rows and columns. The rows and columns are also real and complex numbers. Well, everything is complex. So, so okay. this is the, yeah, this is what I've been struggling a lot with in recent years, which uh, which I think is very so. The, the, the whole the really strange thing about the theory of spinners. I mean, one of the strange things is that the theory is actually fairly simple. I mean, what I told you is pretty much that's kind of all there is to say about it as long as you just deal with complex numbers. Mm-hmm. But your problem then is that, you know, the, so your space and time are now have four complex dimensions and that's not right. They should be 
you should have four real dimensions with, with one of them time behaving in some way different than, than this, the spatial ones. Yeah. So you need something in mathematicians called a real structure. You need some, some underlying thing that if you, that, that if you throw, if you will throw the complex numbers in, you'll, you'll get, you'll get this, um, these two by two complex matrices. And it turns out mathematically that they're different. You can create different four real dimensional things, very different real four dimensional things, which, um, when you, when you throw in complex numbers, you get these matrices. And so that's, that's the mathematics where the mathematics get, 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 gets tricky and gets very interesting. And where I think there's actually some things to say, which people haven't, uh, yeah, haven't so much appreciated before, but, but that's spinners and tw twisters in some sense are, okay, so, so technically, the, 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 well, maybe it's not a good idea to start with that, but maybe here, here's one way to say, to say it, is that, uh, so the, what, what, the spinners are telling you what they're telling about the real world is if you want to describe the state of a of an electron, you have to um, describe it. It's described by a spinner. So if you just look at a point, that state is described by these two complex numbers. So I recall these spinners all have to be complex. So there's um, so there these there's this kind of two dimensional complex space of the spin degree of freedom at every point. 